All right, gang, thanks much for tuning in to this edition of our Hatch Coaching webinar series. Some of you are watching live, some of you are watching a replay on YouTube or an email I sent you, but either way, you're here to figure out how to work on recruitment. Uh, my name is Eric Hatch of Hatch Realty and Hatch Coaching. Uh, boy, oh boy, it's 2020 as we record this, the year of COVID and chaos, and holy cow, we have had a really unbelievable ride as Realtors. Uh, our team specifically, uh, we of course, when COVID hit, we expected all things to shut down and it's been anything but. Uh, we're up almost 40% for the year, pacing to do 850 to 900 transactions this year. That's super fun, super awesome, and I'm just uh, counting my blessings every day. Uh, I also uh, own and operate and run Hatch Coaching. Uh, Hatch Coaching has been in existence now for about four and a half years. And our passion more than anything else is that we want to deeply impact and redefine how people treat people. You see it even right there. We want to redefine how people treat people. And so I work on the leadership side of things and the overall business strategy side of things. My partner, Robbie T, that many of you know, Robbie works on lead conversion and ISA stuff. And so we think we're doing uh, everything we can right now to help impact the industry and uh, this is one of the things that we're doing. We're, we're trying to do webinars weekly. And some of you are even giving us some topics, uh, which uh, I will get to here. Uh, but I want today's conversation to happen, not just a presentation, but a conversation. So if, you have, uh, if you're watching live and you have questions or comments, please put them in the chat box. And my goal is to check all your boxes that you are uh, wanting to address. So we're gonna talk in depth today about recruitment. And let me be very, very clear on this. I'm not talking about hiring the masses. Uh, I am talking about hiring for a team. A lot of these philosophies work for hiring the masses. Like this is a weird time. I'm an independent guy. Uh, I have mad respect for places like KW and EXP, but it's just a pissing match right now, isn't it? Watching, watching it all go back and forth. And it's all about, uh, you know, recruitment, building your downline, building your profit share tree, all these other things. And those companies have so much more value besides those things I'm mentioning. But now we're in this like weird grudge match of like who can recruit and, and that sort. And that's not where I'm going today. If you're watching this, trying to figure out how can you recruit to your brokerage and get a hundred people there, that is not the value that I intend on bringing today. Instead, I want to talk with specificity. I want to dive in some really intentional stuff. And I'm going to share my screen here. That's the wrong one. Beep, boop, boop. There it is. And let's make sure I present. All right. We're going to talk in great length about team recruitment, recruiting for your own personal business. Uh, in my book, and by here's a cheesy self-promotion, by the way, but I wrote a book on servant leadership. It's called Play for the Person Next to You. Um, this book uh, has an entire section dedicated to recruitment. And in there, we talk at great length about how important it is to not have 100 people in your organization, but if you have three, four, five, or six of the right people, huh, that becomes a potent punch that's, I think, hard to beat. Uh, the Navy SEALs, the Green Berets of the world, those kind of people uh, are the elites of the elites. And that's who I want you to recruit for your team. So that's where we're going. Buckle up. I hope you take some notes. I hope you ask some questions. And uh, our goal is to get you out of here in 45 or so minutes. So we're going to give or take maybe a couple of minutes of, of fudge time there. But that's where we're going today. And I'm excited to be here with you. Uh, so we're talking about recruitment. And uh, first off, you need to know and understand that when you hire right, 80% of your problems, maybe even 90% of your problems will go away. If you look around in your team or organization or world right now, whatever it is, most of our problems and frustrations come from having the wrong people. Now, I'm a real estate coach and I coach some of the top realtors and business teams in the in business teams. I coach some of the top realtors and teams doing business in the country. And if they can figure out two things, they would never, ever, ever need to hire me ever. But it's job security for me, right? And I'm, I'm here just gonna, I'm gonna give you away the secret. If you wanna avoid hiring a coach and, and paying an arduous amount of money for that kind of accountability, you need to do two things. The first is you need to be great with your schedule. Like actually honor what's on your schedule and know the important things to put on your schedule. 
the webinar we did last week. And if you go to our, our uh, YouTube page for Hatch Coaching, you're going to see uh, uh, we talk about the ideal schedule. And if you can figure out your schedule and the right things to do and when to do it, and then to actually honor that with 100% intention, that's half the battle. The other half of the battle is going into war, going into work, whatever it may be, with the right people. And if you can get recruitment done right, and if you can hire the right people, 80 or 90% of your problems will go away. This was, is, and always will be a people game. So you want the right people and you want to find the Navy SEALs. In fact, my world, and I can, I can proudly say that of the couple things I do exceedingly well, hiring is one of them. I've been able to hire some of the best talent that has no real estate experience whatsoever. In fact, outside of one expansion agent that I have who had been a, a realtor on another team for a year, <coughs> and he sold two houses in that year, uh, outside of him, nobody on my team has ever been licensed and sold real estate before. It is not the, the MO. It's not what we do. We look and we find our people who aren't in the real estate world. And when you have great, unbelievable talent, they'll actually create new problems for you. These new problems are problems of abundance, problems that they're going to force you to be a better leader, problems that they are going to rise the tide in the organization and demand that you get better. That's an unbelievable place to be is to have that kind of pressure put on you from your organization is to have people saying, Eric, you got to get better or we're not going to stick around. And so when you have great talent and you recruit the right people, it's a constant pressure and force that moves you up and has you continually improve on what you're doing and how you're doing it. So here we go. There is a massive difference. The biggest difference is hiring versus recruiting. And, and I have some awesome hiring tips that I'm going to give you here. So yes, you're going to get some of that knowledge, but recruitment is an all the time kind of thing. Going back to college, uh, I was in a fraternity. Um, some of you are like, yeah, no, no doubt. I can tell you're one of those douchey frat guys. And others of you are like, oh, what a respectable young gentleman. He was in a fraternity. Uh, either way, you're both right, whoever is saying that. Uh, hiring versus recruiting is interesting because when, when I was in my fraternity, we would talk about rush week. And rush week is like the week that you throw these events and you try to make everything seem appealing and attractive and everybody would come to our fraternity uh, to learn about it. And then we'd have the rest of the semester where we wouldn't ever try to grow. And it actually limited our growth and we were only capturing those that were the hand raisers. Those that said during rush week, you know what, I'm interested in Greek life and I'm interested in joining a fraternity. And we actually missed out on earning the relationships and finding other people throughout the year that could have been a really great asset. Let me put this in real estate terms as all of you are realtors and maybe, not you're, maybe you're not Greek like I am. Um, I'm Norwegian, but like I joined a Greek fraternity. So that makes me Greek. So, so be it. I'll unbutton a couple more buttons here and let my chest hair really billow out. Um, boy, I get distracted easily there. <laughs> there it was. Uh, in the real estate world, if you decide to hire today, as I, as I record this, it's, it's August 25th, 2020. If you decide to hire today and you place an ad for three weeks, uh, the only people that you're actually attracting are those that are currently looking for a job today. You're not drawing in anybody who's actually happy at their place of work. You're just drawing in people that are currently unemployed or they're not happy where they're at. And yes, I know COVID has birthed into society a lot of really high talented, high-minded people. So our talent pool is deeper than what it has been previously. And yet, I would still rather choose to go after somebody who's happy in their career, who's feeling fulfilled, and then find a way to see if they can exist in our ecosystem. See, recruitment is ongoing. It's an everyday kind of thing. It's the mindset that you constantly, it's an ABR, always be recruiting. Uh, you know, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross says, ABC, always be closing. Uh, Robbie T says uh, on lead conversion calls, always be curious, collaborative, and uh, there was one other C, I think it was karate. Um, anyways, uh, Robbie talks about that. He has an awesome TED talk, if you haven't seen that, by the way. Uh, he has the ABCs of sales. 
and it's always be curious, uh, connecting and collaborating. I think those are the three C's. And so here we're talking ABR, always be recruiting. That's the mentality that you have to take is that this is a lifestyle. This is not something that you do just when you need the person. Because I promise you, if on August 25th, you decide I need somebody else in my world and you place an ad, you are not going to get near the level of talent. You're not going to get your Navy SEAL talents by hiring. You'll only get it by recruiting. So you need to understand that it's constant. These four points are imperative for you to write down if you're taking notes, because I think this is some of the biggest gold that I can give you. The first is your community. What does your community know about you? And I will go back to the slides here so you can see. The, the, the first thing is, what does your community know about you? See, if you sell houses and that's all they know about you, you're limiting your talent pool. If they know you to be an active person at your church or at uh, the United Way, or if you're uh, serving in referral groups, uh, if you're um, in a Lions Club or a Kiwanis Club or anything like that, if you're serving on those levels and you're connecting with people and building relationships, if you're playing on a softball team or if you're playing basketball and you're building relationships outside of just your work, now you're starting to get the point because recruitment is a lifestyle and people need to know that you are not just a realtor. They need to know of your heart and your character because that's what's going to draw people in and keep them around. Real estate is a job. Who you are is your recruitment strategy. Let me say that again because it's important. Real estate is a job. Who you are is your recruitment strategy and you better be a good dude or a good gal. Otherwise, why in the world would somebody want to come and work with you? So you have to be cognizant of how the public perceives you. And if they only know you as a realtor, you are a one note song. It's a symphony of people and organizations and involvement that's going to create a talent, talent magnet for people. Next, number two on this list, the second bullet, what do your friends and family know about your business? So your friends and family know you. The first one's about community. This one is about your friends and family. Your friends and family know you, they know your character, they know your passions. But do they know about your business? Yes, they know you sell houses, but do they know of your vision? Do they know of what you're intending to build? Are they aware that they are influentially impacting your business because they could be bringing to you, not clients, yes, yes, it's great to get referrals from our friends and family, but what does it mean to get a referral for somebody that's talented? Now, there's the long-term game that's being played, and uh, some of you know this about me, some of you don't. Um, I, uh, I used to do youth ministry. Graduated from college, I went to work at my local church for eight years, and I was a worship leader. Uh, I was a youth minister and uh, built some super cool uh, nonprofit things that when I was there. Just an awesome career, loved every last bit of it. And I was unintentionally planting seeds that I had no idea would, would harvest and come to fruition. Here's the scoop on it. I haven't done youth ministry for a decade. It's been 10 years. It was a long time ago. I can't tell you how many houses I've sold to old youth group kids and families from church. I mean, it's, it's in the hundreds probably at this point because I had built those relationships and I was invested in the community and they knew me as a good dude who happened to sell houses. Not as a realtor where you hope he's a good dude. It's important to get that in the right order. Then uh, I now have hired and worked with probably a, a half dozen old youth group kids in fact, I have somebody now, uh, she's lived in New York for about the last six or seven years, and she has run events in New York City. Imagine the intensity and the chaos of what that takes. Her name's Haley, and Haley is coming back to Fargo, and the first person that she called was me because we stayed in touch, because we stayed in contact, because she's watched what I've done on social media, and she's known because we're friends. She's been fully aware of my business and what we're building. See, I'm not here to just sell houses. I'm here to have people get their, their most ideal, per, picture-perfect life. They, they can have that life when they come into my ecosystem. We just use real estate as the vehicle. 
And Haley and I had talked about this previously and now unintentionally I'm recruiting her because she came to me and said, Eric, I'd love to see what it looks like to work in your world because we had just done such a good job of having her know about my business. Number three, is your recruitment continuous or you turn it off and turn it on? That's that hiring piece that we just talked about. And it's imperative if you're gonna recruit to always be recruiting, ABR, write that down. ABR, always be recruiting. Now, the worst recruitment strategy you can do is to try to close somebody right away. That's like going to the bar and meetings, uh, if you go to the bar anymore, but like that's like going to the bar and you meet somebody and then you ask them to marry you that night. Finding somebody, if it's, if it's uh, somebody you know or somebody you don't know and asking them to come work with you or interview, that's like trying to close the deal right away. And it's as foolish as trying to marry somebody after a night of hanging out with them at the bar. It's just, it, there's better ways to do it. The final piece here, and this is big, is what kind of social media presence do you have? See, social media is such a massive way for us to create opportunities to be front of mind for people and to put it out there and so that they know and understand what we do and how we treat people. Okay, notice I didn't say that we're talking about our newest listing and we're talking about open houses. Those are not the ways in which I think we utilize social media. It's our job to be the chamber of commerce, to shine a light on people in our working world, on our clients and on our team members. Because if I consistently celebrate my team members through social media, don't you think that people who know, like, and trust me are already watching? And they see what we're doing, they see how I treat people, and they can't help but wanna be a part of that. And so when we do connect and we talk about dreams and lives and visions, then I can see if there's a path that's in there. And they already know how I treat people. See, I honestly think that your greatest, uh, your greatest recruitment tool is not a split. It's not a job title. It is you. You showing up and saying, listen, I'm going to work hard for you every day to help you achieve your goals. That language stuff is so important as you go through this. Continuing on, everybody shift, everybody do a little shimmy shake. Nobody really does when I say that, but it's important because uh, we're changing a little bit of energy here is I want you to know that having a strategy is fiercely important. On social media, are you looking for clients or are you looking for team members? Because you shouldn't make a post saying, I'm looking for team members. And instead you should make a lot of posts talking about how great these people are in your world and the lives that you get to impact and the stories of success and holy cow. Now, if you're looking for clients, you're oftentimes selling. If you're looking for team members, you're oftentimes selling. And the greatest sales technique ever in the history of Evers is when it's not about you and it's about them. You ask a hundred questions about what somebody wants in their life. And then you show them in your world how other people have achieved their goals and they'll, they can't help but see how their, their dreams and their goals could be achievable in your world. See, having a social media strategy or a strategy when you're in the community matters a lot. I myself look to post on social media at least two times a day. I keep bouncing around here. At least two times a day. Um, usually always on Facebook. There's a little Instagram in there um, and, and that sort. But those are the two mediums that I use. And I follow a rule of five to one uh, or a 20% rule. However you want to do it. It depends on your fractions and your percentages. But I'll tell you this. Your posts about work, about real estate should only show up 20% of the time or one out of every five posts. The other four posts are about your family, your interests, make people laugh, ask questions, engage, post funny memes, that sort of thing. Uh, because so many things on social media, if that is your reputation, if that is your long-term game, you're complaining about the current things that are happening today or your frustrations, whatever it may be, are a deterrent. Uh, there are massive ways to get intentional with social media. And I post two times a day. It's scheduled for me. It's religious for me. And I know to do it. And I know 20% of the time I should post about real estate. What you don't see me do is you don't see me say, I'm looking to hire people. And you don't see me say, I'm looking to, to sell you this house or here's a great house. And I instead talk about and celebrate those people in my world or what we're doing and how we feel and the, the difference that we get to make. 
occasionally there's, there's a little bit of like self promotion in there, but mostly it's used to shine on other people. So that's the strategy I encourage you to do. Please write down, get a strategy, get a strategy. Cause if you don't have a strategy, if you don't walk away from here with a strategy of how to recruit a little bit more, this was entertainment and not education. Education without implementation is merely entertainment. And so please be careful on how you use this time and what you do with it. Now, again, when you do meet with someone, don't try to close them the first time. Uh, I serve on our local United Way board and I was on a board meeting this morning. And uh, I'll be honest, it's a little tiring to just be on another Zoom call and another Zoom call and yet here you are watching on YouTube or watching another Zoom call. And so there's irony in that, of course. Uh, but I heard them say that if you're looking to get a large donation, a major donation, like $10,000 or more from someone, a nonprofit says that it takes 18 to 24 months to secure that major donation. <clears throat> See, a lot of us are going around passing a bucket when it's hiring time. And we pass a bucket and we say, okay, who's interested in donating? Who's going to do this? Who wants to come sign up their life? And everybody throws in a buck or two bucks or five bucks, whatever it may be. And you look around and you're like, we just raised a hundred bucks. That's so cool. We didn't have a hundred bucks before. And if you go to hire right now without recruiting and you just place an ad out there in the world for people to see, it's like you just collected a hundred bucks and it's more than what you had before. But if you plant seeds and if you consistently recruit and you consistently invest in your community and you consistently get involved in the lives of people, all of a sudden in 18 to 24 months, that work that you did to till the fields and plant the seed and continue to cultivate and to put all the right things in there is gonna breed for you a crop of $10,000 or $100,000 or a million dollars because that's the value of a really great hire. See, there's coaches out there. <clears throat> there's coaches out there in the world right now and it's a lot of coaches that talk about how you need to hire, 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 hire. And you need to bring out a whole bunch of people and they talk about some recruitment things and the recruitment things are solid that you constantly be doing it. But I don't believe you should hire a bunch of people because every time you do, you are now threatening the people that are already in your ecosystem. I had this conversation yesterday as my ISA leader for Hatch Realty said, hey, we're, we're at a really good healthy point right now. Everybody has enough work. Um, they, they, uh, they're not overworked. They're not underworked. Things are good. Our, our health is solid. And I said, okay, then that means that you need to hire again. And he's like, what are you talking about? I need to hire again. And really what I'm saying is you need to recruit again. And I challenged him and I'm like, Cody, what happens if one person leaves? He's like, well, we'll scramble, but we'll find a way. And like, that's not how I want to run my team is to scramble and find a way. And then I said, well, what does it look to bring somebody else in? And I had like my loaded gun, like my thoughts ready to go. And I said, so what if you have uh, our ISA team as a team of four? What if you have your four and we bring on a fifth right here? He's like, well, dude, that creates chaos. Because what happens is now these people over here don't feel like they have enough to eat. There's an us versus them mentality. It's bringing in people and now there is pressure. These people become flight risks. They become louder. They become more frustrated. And this person is a little bit isolated. What I see coaches encouraging is, hey, bring five or 10 people here and see who sticks. That's not how you build a Navy SEAL team. And instead, what I would say is you bring over here and yes, you should always hire, you should always have a bench, you should always be recruiting, but when you do so, bring it here. See, this is the mentality that I wanna get through your head today, is that as you bring people in, everything is earned in your world and nothing is given. Not to put a bunch of people here, but to put somebody here, or a few people here and have them work in support and in conjunction with these people right here. And then watch the tide rise and they'll get to a point where now they're trusted, they're liked, they're supported, and you can bring that person then over here as your ecosystem is, is supporting. See, for a Navy SEAL to be really successful, it takes a lot of people under them. There's a lot of people in training. There's a lot of people putting pressure on them to get better. But bringing just a bunch of people right here, I don't think is the right mentality. I, uh, I diverged there just a little bit, but I hope you understand the importance of planting those seeds. And that's the seed planting right here. That's what you're doing. You're planting these seeds and not just immediately going to harvest. It doesn't work that way. Well, 
I see a lot of people coach on that and I see a lot of people try that. I don't see a lot of success from that long term because it's just so much turnover. So here is the question, and this is a big one. Please write this down. What is your vision? We are parched for vision right now. Our world is parched for vision because nobody knows how to get through COVID and nobody knows how to get through this election and nobody knows and nobody knows and everybody is exhausted because there's no vision and we don't know where the heck we're going and how we're going to get there. There are a few people standing up and saying, this is where we need to go. This is, this is the passion. This is the desire. This is everything. And, and, and our, our little worlds that we live in in real estate are not the world. But when COVID hit, I watched some of the best leaders in the industry stand up and they moved a certain direction. Even if it wasn't the right direction or they didn't have clarity because the fog hadn't lifted, they just got to taking some action. And they proclaimed a vision. They said, this is who we're going to be in this time. And this is what we're going to do. And it's those companies that had leadership and support that have thrived through this. We as realtors have been fooled. We've been fooled. We've been hoodwinked thinking that we're more successful because the real estate industry is more successful right now. But if we haven't changed our habits and if we don't have a vision and if we don't know what we've done to get us here, we don't know what the hell to do on the next step to get us to the next part. So you can't ride the wave of how things are. You have to be a visionary. Uh, there are so many great books out there right now. Let me show you one. I have it on my desk. Uh, this one is really awesome called Vision, Mindset, and Grit. That's super shiny. Uh, Scott Burroughs, Vision, Mindset, and Grit, an awesome book on vision. Um, get a vision, have a plan. Even if you have to adjust it, you're better than just sitting idly by. Because people are going to be drawn to a vision because the vision says this is who we're going to be. It doesn't say who we are right now. It says this is who we're going to be. And if you want to recruit people on an exceedingly high level, talk about who they can become. They don't want to become what Joe is because that's who Joe was. That's who Joe became. They want to know who they can become. It's about the vision for their life. It's about the vision for your company. And it's about what you can do harmoniously together. Whew. I'm getting preachy here. Pardon me, but I'm fired up about this. Your vision is so important. People need to know the vision. They need to know where they fit in the puzzle. And you need to know how to help them be massively successful. In addition to that, a value proposition is so imperative. I'm sharing mine on the screen right now. This is in our training room. This is a photo I took just a few days ago in preparation for this, that our, our value proposition is uh, our vision. This is who we claim ourselves to be. This is not, we don't, we don't kill it every time on it, but this is who we're striving to be. And watch if your world can exist in this. Hatch Realty, where champions are created. We exist for four reasons. To build servant leaders, to build runways and businesses, to multiply all that good stuff in our life and to be number one. This is who we're intending to be every single day and this is who we're striving to be. And I don't have to sell it, but what other businesses are talking about building a runway for you and with you? And what other business is talking about multiplying and to give more and to get more and to have more and to share more? Or are you talking about we're here and we sell widgets? Or are they talking about, you know, we, we sell houses and it's to make money. Notice money doesn't show up on this. Money doesn't inspire. I mean, money can motivate, but it doesn't inspire. Your job is to inspire. So what makes you a magnet? What would make you be such a figure in your community and on social media and in your friend groups where people can't help but be inspired? Please write down this question. What is my magnetic power? What's going to draw people to you? And I understand. I'm a 99i. A lot of you are not 99i's. I'm a former pastor and I love to speak and I love to preach and I love to get fired up. I love doing webinars. And how weird is that, right? You don't have to be that. You don't have to be any of those things. What you do have to know is what your magnet is and lean into it. And your magnet, if you're ever going to recruit people exceptionally well, is that magnet needs to be then uh, drawing people in so they can see their hopes, dreams, 
wants, and goals attainable best through you. See, when somebody comes into your world, yeah, they might be looking for a job. People are motivated either by fear or inspiration. Fear of I don't have enough money, so I need a job that pays me better. Or inspiration to say, I want to go work for that person because they unbelievably rise the tide for me. Fear is saying, I'm not going to have enough food on the table. I, I, I don't like where I work. I, I'm afraid of doing wrong. Like People are motivated by fear or inspiration. And if you can inspire, that is your magnet. So do you have a vision and a mission written down? And is it well articulated? And is it repeated easily by your team? See, we talk about this vision of our company all the time. And I'm not, I don't think we even do it enough. Um, there's a book by Patrick Lencioni. It's called The Motive. Patrick Lencioni has written about a dozen books, some of my favorite leadership books. And his most recent is called The Motive. He said that of all the leadership books, it's the one of his you should actually read first. Because it talks about the importance of all the things that a CEO and a leader needs to do in their organizations. And he, he says that one of the main jobs of a CEO is to be a CRO, a chief repeating officer. That you say a vision, that you say a dream, that you say what it is internally and externally all the time. That you are a talking head. Imagine you're Brad Pitt. Uh, first of all, congratulations on being very attractive. Second of all, now you're, you're starring in a movie, and so you're going from Jimmy Kimmel to Jimmy Fallon to Jimmy Corden uh, to everybody else named Jimmy who's on the late night circuit, and you're going on radio shows, and you're doing advertisements and all these things, and guess what? They're all asking you the same stupid questions. Imagine you're a rock star, right? Imagine, uh, imagine you are uh, Adam Levine from Maroon 5. Every night, you're going to a different stadium playing the same songs over and over and over again. It's all people want to hear are the hits. Well, that's what it means to be a CRO, a chief repeating officer, is that you do the same thing that's the most important thing that gives the best message over and over and over and over and over again. So much so that you're so tired of it that people actually now remember it. Because most people in our world don't remember those things and we have to be the chief repeating officer on things. Gang, we're almost there. Uh, I want to talk about Mindshare. Uh, take a look at that beautiful salad I put on the screen here. Uh, this is a derivative of uh, a way in which I recognize that my Facebook strategy uh, was paying off. See, years ago, I saw somebody poke a, post a bacon meme. And I was like, that's hilarious. And so I posted a bacon meme. Uh, and I got likes and shares. And as a high eye, that like just tickles my fancy. I'm like, yeah, that's that's totally awesome with this bacon meme. So a couple days later, I posted another. More likes, more shares, more comments. Uh, I would then go to the grocery store and I'd see people that I knew or I'd run into old friends or Facebook acquaintances and people started to talk to me about bacon. They started to say things like, I can't see bacon without thinking of you. For Christmas that year, I no joke from 13 different people without even asking for it, without them being on my Christmas list, I got 13 different packs of bacon. I spoke at, uh, I, I volunteered my time and spoke at this event and they thanked me by subscribing me to the Bacon of the Month Club. I became synonymous with bacon. I had created Mindshare that people when they saw bacon thought of me. Now the odd thing is I like sausage just as, my, just as much as I like bacon but it's kind of weird being known as the sausage guy. And so I'm known as the bacon guy. And it's still to this day, I get tagged in memes and posts and gifts and all these things just because I somehow became the bacon guy. That's my mind share. Couldn't I figure out how to become the incredible businessman that people want to work with and for? I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't that be valuable? Couldn't I find a way uh, to be known as the guy that works exceedingly hard for his team? Because if I have that kind of mind share, wouldn't that lead to an amazing opportunity for those that are, are, are thinking that, you know, maybe this job isn't as fulfilling as I want it to be, or maybe I want to take a risk and a leap and, and, and jump into this next phase. So 
Pretty awesome. I'm going to take a deep breath. There's a couple questions I want to get uh, to here, and then we're going to jump back into my final stuff. Uh, Jeff asks uh, that he'd love help setting up an ISA. Uh, Jeff, uh, I want you to email Robbie T, R-O-B-B-Y-T, at hatchcoaching.com or go to hatchcoaching.com uh, to our website, and you'll see ways that you can sign up for some ISA help there so we can help with that. Jessica says, uh, talking about leadership topics, finding their why, weaknesses, motivations, use it to scale their business. Ooh, we have something for you, Jessica. We are launching in the next couple of weeks, the third edition of our Hatch training package. We have three things, <clears throat> Uh, we have three things that we've built uh, when COVID hit. We lost a bunch of our clients in coaching. We've got all those back and then some now. But when, when COVID first hit, we lost about 40% of our clients. And Robbie and I took our time and we said, let's, let's find a way to scale what we do. And so he and I, and then we also have Connor, who is our training and development director for Hatch Realty. We've built out three training modules. Mine is how to build a real estate team. Robbie's is the ultimate guide to lead conversion and Connor's is uh, onboarding and training. And there are 40 to 50 video modules that are training you on all these things that I just mentioned. Jessica, your question was around uh, people finding their why, weaknesses, motivations, and that sort. If you go to hatchtraining.com, keep an eye on that. You're gonna see the opportunities that we have out there uh, to help you with that. In addition, if you go to our YouTube page, our YouTube channel, uh, just cleverly called Hatch Coaching, look for Connor's video on there because he talks about their finding their why, their weakness, their motivators, and all that to scale business. So we have those resources already created for you. So look at that. Uh, we have a question saying, does Hatch Coaching only provide pre-recorded videos for coaching or is there a real life person or group for discussions? It's both. Uh, we offer video coaching. Uh, we offer uh, individual one-on-one -on -one coaching, and then we have our training models, modules that get you access to Robbie and myself and Connor so we can help you along your journey. So check out hatchcoaching.com, and if you have questions, sign up, and we will get all those answered. David, where do you find potential recruits? I'm about to get there. That's such a good question. And then uh, Jessica says, perfect, that's helpful, I love it. I just wanted to make sure I got to those questions, and we're gonna jump back to our content. David says, where do you find potential recruits? I'm about to get there, David. So that's such a good question. Okay, shift, this is your last shift. I'm gonna ask a little shimmy shake, a little shoulder action to get reset, restarted. And I realize when I do that, I shake my monitor and everything looks a little bit goofy. But uh, let's talk about who should you recruit? This again plays into the philosophy of, um, this plays into the philosophy of Navy SEALs versus Army Reservists or people that are Green Berets uh, instead of people who are just random weekend warriors. And by the way, I have a massive amount of respect for those that are in the guard and that sort. Um, I'm just trying to draw attention to what it means to have an A player because you got to know who you should recruit. This list of six, and I'm going to come back to it in just a moment, uh, is a derivative of where we came with all this. And here's how the derivative went is uh, I was reading a book and it was called uh, The Road Less Stupid by a guy named Keith Cunningham. Keith Cunningham is actually the rich dad in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, a uh, little fun fact for you. And Keith Cunningham's book, uh, The Road Less Stupid was one of the best books I read last year. And I was out for a walk doing Audible and I literally stopped in my, in my tracks. And I heard him talk about uh, a definition for A players. And when you finish this webinar and we send you uh, the email afterwards, I'm going to give you his definition of A players. I thought it was so masterfully articulate, uh, articulated in which I said like, yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking for. He finally gave a definition to who I'm looking for. Uh, the question that David is saying is, is where to look for that. And I'll cover that in a moment, but who to look for. You need to know what talent actually looks like. I then took that A player material, I brought it back to my team, we regurgitated it, and that's what we came up with what's on the screen here. Uh, these are our A players. This is what we look for and what we determine as like amazing top tier talent. They're self-aware, they're internally motivated, they have a positive attitude, they own their crap, they're striving to improve, they're coachable, and that they're a servant leader. I'm gonna send you a couple of documents that'll help lay this out even more, but you need to know if you're going to be recruiting constantly, who are you going to recruit? 
See, if you don't know what you're looking for, if you don't have a vision, it's all for nothing. If you're just trying to find a warm bot to fill a seat, I can find you plenty of those. But if you want to find an A player, an unbelievable talent, people that are going to change your ecosystem and you get to change theirs, you have to know what an A player looks like. I can't stress this enough. In fact, there's three types of talent that's out there that you can look for. There's unproven, emerging, and proven talent. David, I'm getting to your question here now because this is where you find these people. Unproven talent, these are people that have no real estate experience whatsoever. Those people that have no real estate experience whatsoever, I think are the sexiest draws that, are, that, that you can possibly do. When I'm talking about talent right now, I'm talking about talent in real estate, and then I'll zoom out from there. But if you have somebody that's unproven talent, that means they have no experience whatsoever. And today in COVID, here's what I'm gonna tell you. Uh, there are more unemployed servers, bartenders, and retail workers than the history of the United States has ever seen. And because of that, there's a deeper pool of talent out there right now for people who are scrambling to make 30,000 bucks a year, and they can make 10 times that selling real estate with you. You might have to change how you bring them in because oftentimes they can't come in without a salary. And that's why I think our showing, if you have, by the way, our showing partner stuff that we have, I think is true gold. Please check that out on our Hatch Coaching page. Lots of valuable things with that. So it talks about don't hire a buyer agent, hire a showing partner and just really great things there. In addition to, uh, in addition to unproven talent, the, the, these are people who uh, don't have any real estate experience. And that is a wide net to cast. The more you're involved in referral groups, the more you tell your family what you're doing, the more you get out there in the community, the more connected you're going to be. Uh, remembering that a $10,000 crop is gonna take 18 to 24 months in which to harvest. So it's gonna take a while to plant those seeds. Emerging talent is number two, at least I think that's number two. Yep, emerging talent is number two. And emerging talent shows up uh, as somebody who maybe is in their first couple of years of real estate. Uh, or maybe they're fresh out of college and have done another career. Um, sitting literally 15 feet away from me, right over there, is a gal named Jess. Uh, I was active on my local campus, North Dakota State University. I was active at NDSU for years, helping to lead and develop uh, students. And Jess was one of those kids that was involved in it. And I went to her when she was in college. She was like a, a sophomore or junior. I'm like, Jess. If you're ever looking for a job when you get out of college, let me know. I planted a seed. And she went and uh, another two years later came knocking at her door and said, hey, are you hiring? Well, show sure enough, I hired Jess. She's one of the best hires I've ever made in the history of my hires because she was, uh, she was emerging talent in her little ecosystem. She was unproven talent, but she was emerging talent. And I had to put myself in those situations to discover emerging talent, people that are coming out of college, people that are a couple years in and they show that they have some trajectory, but I promise you, they may have trajectory, but they don't have vision. And that's where you can come in with masterful vision. The third piece is proven talent. I love proven talent. Uh, here's the obscure thing. Uh, my, mom, uh, my mom passed away in 2001. So she passed away 19 years ago. Uh, so I was 21 years old and orphaned, and that was a super tough time in my life. But my mom had uh, a gal that was her boss. Uh, her name's Karen. Uh, Karen is a strong, fierce woman who worked for the local hospital. Um, my mom wasn't a nurse. She worked on the administration side of things, and Karen was one of the upper-level managers. Well, I hired Karen's stepson two years ago, and he's one of our expansion agents. Um, so I hired Justin two years ago and literally last night, Justin came to me, we're, we're doing a career night looking to, uh, grow our talents and looking to grow who it is that we want in our world. Um, especially in our lakes area, one of our expansion markets. And Justin comes to me afterwards. He says, Hey, guess what? Uh, Karen's interested in this job. And I said, what do you mean? Karen's interested. Karen's like 65 years old, probably one of the strongest women I've ever known. And he said, well, yeah, uh, through all this COVID stuff, she got laid off from her job and she doesn't want to retire for another few years. He's like, uh, and this is, this is probably the most talented person with a proven track record that has shown up at my doorstep. And Karen says, uh, you know, I'm interested in this. I, I'm, I'm curious about this job. 
Um, is this something you'd ever consider? And it's like, for sure I would, because proven talent is hard to resist. Uh, sometimes they're going to be stubborn and caught in their ways, but if they're coachable and in a moldable system, and if they're an A player, again, coachable, they own their own crap and all those other things, we know that that could work out. And so I might be the boss or the owner of the company that employs my mom's former boss. How obscure is that? And that again comes because this is always a long time game, the thing that we're playing and constantly uh, recruiting. It's, uh, it, it's hard to articulate and important to do. So how to recruit constantly, always, all the time. Who cares about you? Your vendors, your family, your friends, they're gonna be some of your best lead sources. What about your team members? I wanna talk about team members for a minute because those that are already in your ecosystem, if they love where they work, they're gonna to want to recruit people that they love and people that they know will be successful in that place. That is one of the keys that's unlocking all this is if your team members love where they work, love who they work for and love what they do, they're only going to find like-minded people to come and work alongside people that they know, like, and trust. And that's like a, a, a skip ahead, like six or seven steps. It's that important when it comes to uh, recruitment. So empower your team members to be recruiters. I think experience is overrated. I'd hire, I, I, I would rather hire somebody that's never sold a lick of real estate in their life than somebody with experience. Uh, experience means you probably were trained wrong, at least for our ecosystem. Do you have a, a career page? Do you have uh, integrated omni-channel digital recruiting programs? Those are big names. Those are big words. And so let me, uh, let me do this. I'm going to jump around here just a moment. Uh, I got to click out of that. I gotta click back into this. I got to come back and share my screen. Uh, stick with us folks. We have just a couple minutes left. Uh, brand new website. We just launched our Hatch Realty website, just got uh, an overhaul. So if you want to check it out, hatchrealty.com, we're really pleased with uh, the product that we have. But we have a career page. Go to our About Us section and you click on careers and it comes to this page. So we post our current job postings. This is my favorite quote that I say is uh, working here is like a country club, highly exclusive to get into and massively inclusive once you're a part of it. And I talk about the commitment that I make to our team members, what they get. This is my value proposition. This is who they're going to be in our world. Again, go to, go to the hatchrealty.com website to take a look at that. The other option is you can have like singular landing pages. These are some of my friends down in Minneapolis that run a company called the MLS Online. What a, what a great domain, by the way. Uh, back in the 90s, they bought the MLSonline.com and they have, I think it's like a quarter of a million leads in their database that they paid $0 for. Pretty unbelievable. But they have uh, one consumer facing, uh, realtor recruiting, new people starting page with all these different things. Shows everything for their value proposition to their lead capture opportunities to everything else. And so yes, you need to know the how and you need to know what is it gonna take to do this and to do this on a really high level. The final piece that uh, we're getting into the how now, this is more a hiring piece than a recruiting piece. Uh, write down Wise Hire, W-I-Z-E-H-I-R-E, wisehire.com. Wise Hire is a super inexpensive platform that allows you to take a job ad and to post it. Uh, you can post it with them and they blast it to literally thousands of sites from indeed.com to monster to Craigslist to jobs.com to you name it, they're posting there. And then when people apply, they actually uh, are, are rating the people, they're, they're serving as coaches uh, for that. And there's uh, also some really big opportunity there um, to capture their disc profile and everything else. So Wisehire does all that. It's super inexpensive. And in the email I'm sending you, there'll be a discount code uh, that'll be there for you to save a hundred bucks on your first month of Wisehire. Finally, take a look how to hire. Uh, I have nine steps on how to hire. I think it's super important. Uh, I have a class. We're going to send you details on this, but I have a class because this is a totally different topic, a totally different dive in, but we follow a nine step hiring process because you can recruit great people, but if you're not making sure that they're the right person, you're letting a turd into your water. And if you've ever seen Caddyshack, when something that even looks like a turd enters the water, 
uh, everybody runs from the pool. Turns out it was just a baby Ruth, but everybody runs from the pool. So uh, all the slides I've sent, uh, all the slides you've seen today, I'm gonna send to you uh, a discount for Wise Hire, uh, some information on our training package, as well as we have a summit coming up in Fargo. This summit is uh, September 23rd through the 25th. Some of the top real estate teams and players in the country will be here in Fargo, North Dakota. This is one of the first events that'll be an in-person event. Uh, I know that everybody has different temperatures of where they are for comfort with COVID, and we're gonna do everything we can to make sure that we're creating a secure and safe experience for those that choose to come. So we're gonna give you a discount code for that also. There's a couple final things in the chat box. This is your last chance to ask some questions. Otherwise, we're about wrapped. Uh, we have a question. I'm currently with Sierra and another coaching platform, trying to find a better match with coaching. You've watched some of our free training sessions, and you're talking with Robbie tonight. That's awesome. Uh, we're not saying that we're the best. Uh, we're just, uh, we have our niche, and we've carved it out, and I think we've done exceptionally well to hopefully bring great value. Uh, Robbie especially. Robbie's like the, the coach of all coaches. Um, David says this, and this is a great point. I've, I've tried Wise Hire and found myself chasing down the applicants like I do buyer and seller leads. In your area, there are 10 times more postings for positions than there are people looking. How do you stand out? Uh, great question. Uh, chasing people down can be exhausting. Um, we're so inundated with emails and that sort. And the way to make yourself stand out is to recruit and not to just hire. If you turn it on during that time when, when Wise Hire has all these other ads placed, and for people to even get unemployment right now, sometimes they have to be applying for X number of jobs a week. And so you'll get some people that are a, a bit crummy. One of the things that we've done is we've added our career night. It's step number three. Uh, so I'll go back here and let you look here. Uh, but step number three, our career night, when you get somebody in person, you put that extra step in there and you see the whites of their eyes, you get a really good idea of who your serious players are and how well they'll vibe in your ecosystem. And so David, if you have more questions about hiring, don't hesitate to reach out to me because uh, I'm more than happy to help. Well, folks, I said I'd be 45 minutes. I've been 53, you've stuck with me. Thank you for that. If you have questions or anything I can do to bring value to your world, please let me know. But otherwise, check out hatchcoaching.com. Uh, we have a bunch of free stuff on there and some stuff that you can subscribe to and uh, really rise the tide in your world. So. God bless you. Have a beautiful day and go recruit every day. Thanks, everyone.